What's shaking, everybody? No, for the past few months, I've been speaking of changes, and uh, everything didn't transpire as quick as I uh, thought it would or as I hoped it would. But everything's good to go now. As you guys can see, what's behind me is uh, different than what you're used to. Now, I didn't get issued a new truck. I didn't go buy a new truck, but I have left Hens Trucking. Now, uh, left Hens for multiple reasons, but before I get into those, I want to say it wasn't because of anybody in the office or because of how I was treated. Uh, because I was treated actually very well. I was paid very well. But it was time to make a change. Yeah, a couple of the big reasons of why I'm leaving. Um, number one, I wanted something to where I could get home about every week. Hens wasn't going to give me that. I mean, unless we got on the Valmont run, um, running parts. But even though I was there for around two years or so, um, obviously don't have enough seniority to get into something like that. You know, like I say, I wanted to get home about every week. You know, uh, lovely girlfriend's going to be graduating college this next year. You know, want to be able to create a halfway normal life. Yeah, I know there's a lot of guys and gals that are able to do it being gone for a month at a time, but it's not what I want and obviously isn't what she would want. Um, I don't know of any spouse out there that wants their husband gone that long. So, yeah, like I said, it's not that easy for me either. You know, I'd like to be home a little more often, get a little bit of a sense of normalcy to be able to do something. You know, when you're gone for a month and you come back, your whole week spent doing all kinds of things, you know, because everything's planned on when you get back home. This way everything can be uh, set for, <clears throat> you know, a specific weekend or something like that. We can go from there. Uh, the other big part of it is light pole loads. I can go on forever, all day long, about how bad light pole loads are, and I can never make them sound as bad as what they are. You know, seven drop load, go into places trucks aren't allowed, high schools, courthouses, new businesses, and these poles, and as little as these guys are getting, I mean, they're easy to secure, um, they're small poles, they're light, but a lot of these poles can go to one of their shops, and they can take them over there in their pickup or on one of their little trailers, uh, but they want you to get 53 foot spread axle flatbed in there, and it just don't work. Uh, that and the directions they give you are coming from electricians that are telling you how to get a pickup in there and not how to get a you know big truck in there so you're taking a lot of restricted roads they don't pay attention to low bridges or tight turns or anything like that it's just miserable and if I continue to do that honest to goodness I give myself a stroke I'm not even joking about that I can't handle the stress with them so those are the two big reasons with me getting out and going to look for something different you know, because the light pole loads they they really killed my love for this job, for this industry. You know, <clears throat> I began to really hate my job. And that's a bad deal because, you know, you're away from home. You're going into these places. And when you're miserable, it makes it a million times worse. Um, like I say, any job, you have a bad day, it's a bad day out here. Your good days are better than any job you could ever have. Your bad days are worse than any bad day you could have in any other job. So, had to get out. So, <clears throat> when I left Melton, I had a pretty good idea I was going to go to Hens. I talked to Rod before I went to school. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to keep my options open. I knew Rod paid well. I knew where he ran at the time. Um, later, he's branched out to really doing a lot of the East Coast uh, compared to what we used to. It used to be everything west of I-35. But I put an ad out on Craigslist, and for those of you switching jobs, not that, you know, not not a ton of years experience, Craigslist is a hell of a thing, so a lot of companies don't advertise for drivers, a lot of your smaller companies will look on Craigslist, they'll look at the resume section. And when I did that with Melton, I got a ton of job offers from flatbed companies, uh, smaller flatbed companies, uh, grain haulers, car haulers, uh... Uh, even some milk tankers, uh, pneumatic tankers, things like that. Went with Rod, and it was fun. I mean, I had a blast for the two years I was there. Like I said, the light poles killed it for me. 
but left on good terms. Love everybody there. <clears throat> Rod's a hell of an owner, hell of a boss. Todd, his brother, does all the money stuff. He's a hell of a guy. Dispatchers are all good. I mean, they all have their moments, but Rudy, Alec, and uh, Scott, they're all good guys. Mechanics are really great. I mean, Bob has his moments. The guy that runs the whole thing, but they're all good. And uh, they gave everybody a pay raise to start out at like 55 cents a mile, I think. So definitely recommend them for a uh, flatbed carrier. You know, they always keep you busy. You got freight coming out their ears. And I say just light bulbs killed it for me. But when I knew I was going to switch and knew I needed to make a change, I had a job offer on the table from the guy that got me this truck. But I did the same thing. I put that out on Craigslist and I looked at it, you know, looked at the job offers I was getting. Got some, you know, mediocre ones, some pretty good ones, some great ones. So uh, one of the great ones I got is a company out of Randolph, Nebraska, running cattle. Um, pay you really good, keep you really, really busy. The only thing I didn't like about them was that they would send me home when they wanted to send me home, not when I wanted to go home. And what that means is that, I have a pickup coming by here staring at me. <clears throat> what that means is that they can run you hard for one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and they can say, okay, you're going to go home for a day today. You know, not much notice, not nothing like that. You know, I'm not home every weekend or once every two weeks or once a month or anything like that. It's just whenever they get things slow enough that you can take a day home, they'll send you home for a day or two days and get you right back in the truck and get you going. Now, that may disgust a lot of people and they may throw a fit about it. I'm not going to dog on them because that's the way they got to run business to make truck payments, keep up contracts, things like that. And for me at this time, it didn't work and it's not going to work. But say if you were a single cat, then it would work out phenomenally. I mean, you would make a ton of money doing that. You know, and you would have the opportunity to put that money away, get the experience, go buy your own truck and go, go from there. But it wasn't going to work for me. But his cat, talked to him, and like I say, everything transpired slowly. It was supposed to be set up for right after we got back from camping there in Colorado. But the one Peter Bill he was going to go buy, the guy passed away. The other two that he was going to buy got caught up in a estate sales, you know, all 379 Pete's. Well, then he looked at a Western Star. And he was on his way to go buy that Western Star in Missouri, and the shady dealer started pussyfooting around to find out that he still wanted to go all the way down there. He actually sold the thing a couple days before, but he wasn't going to tell him because he wanted him to go down and be forced to buy something in his lot. And he said, fuck that, and turned around. This truck here is a Long Hood Western Star, and I'll do a truck tour uh, once I get... Uh, get my radio put in, get my antennas put on, and uh, get hooked up to a trailer. Uh, his buddy that used to live in South Dakota had this truck, was going to sell it. He lived in Richmond, Virginia. So he got, he'd got he seen the truck, he knew what the guy did to it, so he went, paid the bank in South Dakota, and then flew out to Richmond, Virginia. Drove this truck all the way back. I actually got a Megan at Shoemakers there uh, when I was on my way to Omaha there to deliver uh, that lumber coming out of Colorado. Made up a Shoemakers in Lincoln, got a look at the truck, take some pictures. If you guys check my Twitter out, you've seen the one at the steering wheel. Like I say, I'll do the truck tour later. Um, but yeah, went out and got it, brought it back. Got the moose killer put on it. Got some lights fixed. I was going to replace the windshield, but uh, hasn't yet. It's got a refrigerator and stuff in it. Um, went and got the wheels aligned. I got new steer tires put on it. And when they align the wheels, I don't know what the deal is, but my, my steering wheel is crooked, uh, which is fine, I guess. But had to go pick it up yesterday. I uh, didn't want to go pick it up till Thursday is what the plan was, but or uh, Wednesday, tomorrow, uh, which what the plan was, but now... Uh, Say we had to go get it yesterday, move in a little bit yesterday, moving the rest of it in today, getting the rest of my laundry caught up. 
And then I will leave uh, tomorrow morning about 5 6 o'clock and run up to Bassett, Nebraska, where we will get a uh, fuel line fixed, get a mud flap replaced, get my uh, Connex put in here, 4600 Connex, uh, get my uh, antennas set the way they're supposed to be set. And uh, there's a few other things that need to be worked on. I can't remember what the hell they are. It's going to be an all day deal. And then after that, I'm guessing I'm probably going to have to run over to uh, O'Neill and go to bed there and then go to go to uh, Neely in the morning and get my fuel card uh, fleet, fleet one, I think, uh, fleet one checks, uh, get the envelopes, send my bills and figure out how to do all the paperwork for those guys, figure out how to do my paperwork for the guy I'm going to go work for. His name is Jeff tomorrow and go from there but like I say I told him exactly what I wanted I was very specific about what I wanted and that's you know I feel that right now I get to kind of play that card you know no sense you know now that I got my experience three plus years or you know three at least three years that I can be a little bit picky about what I want to do, where I don't have to go just take the first job that comes up. I can go and I can be picky and get exactly what I want. What I wanted to do from when I was a young boy was haul cattle. Swore I was gonna do it when I was little, kind of faded away when I was 21, I was gonna go do it, but nobody would take you without experience. Went to school, I knew I was gonna go to school, but same thing, no experience, can't take it because of insurance. And so I figured flatbed was the next best thing and, you know, had fun doing it. But now I got the opportunity to run cattle, get back to my roots, get back to, you know, kind of get back around people like myself, you know what I mean? So the way it's going to work, uh, the guy that is going to train me how to run cattle is uh, my boss is one of my boss's really good friends, actually lives uh, next town over uh, from where I'm at right now. No, so he got injured. I won't be ready to go until about the fall. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to jump on the hopper, run hopper, uh, which is what my uncle does for this guy. And uh, kind of figure out how to do that. The way it was going to work is I was going to run with my uncle, but I don't think it's going to work that way right now uh, because of everything shaped up with the truck. So <clears throat> kind of get thrown into the deep end of the pool. But I'll figure it out. You know, shippers and consignees, I'm sure they've had rookies with it, so... Sure, they will uh, walk me through everything, kind of let me know what I need to do, and obviously mistakes are going to be made. So, not going to be huge mistakes, just, you know, going to be shit that I don't know that I screw up, so. But, I do know I'm going to be pulling a 50-foot hopper bottom, a tri-axle, so, that'll be nice. Got shorter sides on it, though, so I won't be able to pull as much of the light stuff. Uh, my uncle was pulling it. Uh, then he hooked up to his new trailer. It's got taller sides on it. But, like I say, we're going to get down there tomorrow, get everything done at the truck, hook up to the trailer, and figure out where we're going from there. Get all my stuff on uh, Thursday and hit the road. And my lovely girlfriend's going to be going to Florida next week. Be down there for a month. So I will... Stay out on the road, you know, come back. Uh, I think the max they want me to stay out is about two weeks. So if I stay out two, two and a half weeks, something like that, week and a half, two weeks, week and a half, two and a half weeks, I don't know. Then I'll take my home time at my mom's house. And then once uh, she gets back, then I will uh, come right back here. Spend time with her, see how her trip was, and look at her pictures and hear her stories. And then stay out until rodeo week there in Burwell, and I will come home for about a week pick her up we'll go to Burwell and we'll hang out in Burwell for a week enjoy rodeo enjoy the family the friends uh, I guess it's my honor year uh, for graduation I don't know what the hell that entails I was just told that it was our honor year over Facebook and I, I haven't heard anything since so I don't know if we have to do a float or grand entry or what we got to do so Oh well, care less really if I saw a lot of my classmates, but it'll be it'll be nice. Here's some stories. 
So, but anyway, guys, I wanted to keep you posted, let you know what was up. I know it took longer than I was supposed to. I'll get you a truck tour video uh, once I get everything hooked up and I get a little bit of time. It's a really cool truck. Um, love the bunk in it. Uh, really, really like the bunk in it. But uh, <clears throat> it's going to be interesting. And it's going to give you guys a really good bird's eye view, some really good, uh, really cool stuff. Be looking down a different hood, uh, give you a lot better vantage point. Now, this dash is straight, <laughs> which is nice, not slanted like hell. Of course, I got a straight hood on it too, which is probably why that is. So, that give you different different views of different things. A lot of two lanes, a lot of you know, a lot of a lot of farm and ranch style of things. So, even with the hopper, I mean, we'll get out to places like that. You know, some feed lots and different things. And then, you know, with cattle. I don't know uh, which company we're leasing onto. I know with the hoppers, he owns his hoppers, but we lease on to a company called Blackstrap out of Neely, Nebraska. <clears throat> uh, but we're pulling all our own equipment. Uh, with the cattle, I I don't know if we're pulling if I'm pulling Jeff's trailer or if I'm gonna pull uh, whatever company we're gonna lease on to uh, their trailer. So. And like I say, I don't know what company we're leasing on to anyway, so I don't know where we're going to be going, if we're going to be pulling solely out of feed yards, or if we're going to uh, be doing the baby kids, or if we're going to be uh, running out to farms, ranches, I don't know. I mean, could be a mixture of all of them. One thing I do know is I'm not going to be hauling any piggies, which is awesome. I know they're a pain in the ass. Uh, fucked my instructor Ryan's leg up, hogs did. But, anyway guys, like I said, I wanted to keep you posted, let you know what was up. Uh, I'm going to grab the last few things I need to throw in here, get them set up in here, and then go inside and hang out. Uh, girlfriend's uh, friends, a couple of them, uh, Sissy and John, going to be coming over, uh, going to be going to the bar to watch the grandparents shoot pool. Um, obviously I can't drink since i got to drive tomorrow, so... We'll hang out and do our thing. It'll be fun. So, but anyway, guys, hope you all are staying safe. As always, I thank you guys for watching.